How do you leverage efficiency instead of just worrying about hard work and hustle? In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to use data and analytics to better increase your sales through an efficiency mindset. This video is sponsored by none other than Lead Heroes, you guys. Lead Heroes has got you covered when it comes to telemarketed leads and virtual staffing. On the lead side, whether it be Medicare supplement leads, final expense leads, turning 65 leads, they just got something for everybody. They can also actually have you plug in with one of their virtual staff members on the staffing side to where you can pay by the hour for one of their trained and very well vetted staff members to help you out in your business in a virtual assistant format. Just because you watch this video, they're gonna give you 10% off any order you make on their website. Link to the site can be found down in the description, so go ahead and check them out. So, how do data and analytics help you grow your clientele and your insurance business? Well, in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly what you need to do and what you need to actually focus on in order for that to play a pivotal role, okay? So, what do I mean by data and analytics? Let's first start off with that. Well, with data and analytics, these to me can come in multiple different shapes, multiple different forms. So let's just first start off with what's working the best to help you convert sales into new clients, okay? What's helping you convert leads the best, right? So it could be a particular lead source. It could be a particular lead in general that you're buying. It could be a particular uh, marketing platform or marketing campaign that you're trying. And this is gonna be incredibly vital. One thing I've preached on this platform for many years is when you're independent and you're working in the field, everything you do to get you a new client is either gonna cost you time or money. If you're a follower of this channel for some time, you probably heard me say this multiple, multiple times, okay? Now, that being said, I've also preached that you need a diversity of lead streams. You need a diversity of lead sources, okay? So I've always said five is a very, very good target that you should be trying to aim for, okay? Five different lead sources. Some might cost you time, some might cost you money. Depending on which one you have more to give, you might be spending more money or you might be spending more time, depending on which resource you have more available at that point in time. Now, when you have five lead sources, and let's just say... For the sake of example, for this particular point I'm trying to make, let's just say you have five different types of leads and five different types of marketing campaigns that you're doing. It's a mixture of leads you're buying and it's a mixture of marketing that you're actually doing that you're, uh, that's on your own efforts, which I'm a big believer in over time, but it doesn't always work from day one, right? So one thing that's a very good thing to learn is let's say you're going through AEP, right? And you're going through AEP and it's a seven and a half week grind. You don't really have a whole lot of time to track things and kind of look at data. But one thing that you should be doing is each and every sale you make, you should be tracking where that lead came from for multiple reasons. Number one is so you, that you can have more information on the data and the analytics so you know what's working versus what's not working. That's number one. Number two, and a little bit unrelated, you're covering your own butt a bit. Because if that person ever files a complaint, the carrier is going to come and ask for how you had permission to contact to get in touch with that person. So if you have a lead, a compliant lead that you've saved essentially because you know where that person came from, it's going to be able to cover your butt and protect yourself as you go as well. Okay. Now, the data and the analytics in terms of what worked and what didn't work, this is how you're going to use that information to your most valuable resources. Okay. This is how you're going to use this information to help you benefit. This information can be used because let's say you go into the new year and you're revamping your marketing strategy like we are right now, right? We're in January as, as I record this for you. So you're revamping your marketing strategy. You take a look at what you did the previous AEP and potentially even the previous year. And let's say you had five different things that you were spending money on in terms of buying leads and or running marketing campaigns. And let's say three of them worked incredibly well. You put maybe 60% of your budget, your marketing budget into those three things. They worked very well. They converted very well. You enjoyed the work in those leads. The other two, on the other hand, you put maybe 40% of that marketing budget in and they didn't convert all that well. Percentages were low. Closing percentages were lower. Maybe they didn't bring in as many leads as you might have expected, right? Maybe it wasn't a situation where you were paying per lead. Maybe it was something that you did your own marketing or someone did some marketing for you and said, there's no guarantee of any kind of thing, right? You put 40% of your budget towards this. Well, what does this mean? It means that if you have three really good uh, strategies and tactics that worked, maybe it's time to put more of your budget 
into those. Maybe it's time to take some of the budget away from these two that didn't work, completely stop doing them particularly, you know, or, or possibly, and put some of that funding into what was working, right? Increase what's working, decrease what's not, and then maybe you take 30% of that 40% and you put it into these three sources that was working incredibly well. You take maybe 10% and you try one or two additional things that you haven't tried before that might be new. Through this strategy, you're going to increase efficiency, you're going to learn what works, and through trial and error, you're going to be able to increase your sales in a more efficient manner and you're going to be able to spend your money much wiser. This is what I do. This is how I've built my business. And this is how I know what I want to spend money on in terms of leads and marketing. It's through years and years of trial and error. Now, that being said, trends change. Marketing changes. What works doesn't always work forever. And so there are things that we were doing three or four years ago in our office that we don't really do as much of today because they just don't work the same as they used to. Through this data and this constant analyzing of the analytics, if you will, you're going to be able to discover what is working and what's not working. By doing this, you're not just not really paying attention to where the business came from. And let's say you go back into the next AEP and you're spending your money exactly the same way. And you get the exact same results with those two types of marketing that took up 40% of your budget that didn't work all that well, right? And you just prevent yourself from doing that. There's tons of agents I see that do not know where their clients come from. And because of this, and as a result, it means they do not know what's working in their business and what's not. Another thing that you can use data and analytics for is trying different kinds of scripts, right? Trying different types of approaches when you're meeting with clients, working with clients. You use it in a reasonably decent sample size, maybe 10, 20, 30 people on each side. Maybe you're using one script on for 20 or 30 people, and then you flip to another script for 20 or 30 people and you're working maybe the same kind of leads, which script works better? By changing this phrase to this phrase, does it help or hurt, in your opinion? Does it help you convert your sales at a higher percentage, or does it lower it? This is also how you know what's working when you're actually doing the presentations and the conversations, and you're talking to your prospective customers as well. Data analytics. I'm not a huge, by, by nature, I'm not a huge numbers guy or an analytics guy, but I've had to force myself to kind of adopt some of these principles because in business, and the insurance business is no exception, you need to make sure that you're working as efficiently as possible, number one, and spending your money as efficiently as possible, number two. So just a couple of things to think about, guys. Anyway, did you guys enjoy this video? Did you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I'd love to have a dialogue with you. Comment down in the comment sections. We are on a grind this year to hit 10,000 subscribers on our channel. We would love your assistance and we'd love your support in getting to this goal. If you enjoy our content and you'd like to show us, make sure to subscribe to the video, drop a like in the video, comment your thoughts down below, and we'll see you next time. We'll be back with another video shortly. Here's to your success and your abundance and make sure to track those numbers. Thanks guys.